biometrics have evolved in leaps and bounds, I would say, over the period from 2015 till now. Quite simply because that was when the uh, mobile phone industry took up biometrics. At first fingerprints and over time iris and face now. And this application, unlike anything that biometrics has seen in the past, has created a volume of use uh, familiarity in the general population and an acceptance of biometry that was not around before. It used to be a government way of controlling citizens. It has become the citizen's opportunity to manage in an efficient and user-friendly way their need to authenticate to anything from Alibaba to PayPal to Facebook, to what have you. So I would say that biometrics have evolved from the point of view of use to the fact that it's become a household type of equipment and no one wants to leave it now. The other thing is, with that volume of application came experience. And with the size of the market came a willingness to spend immense volumes, I would say, of both resources, experience and uh, money on developing biometrics. So today the face, the iris and the fingerprint is way beyond anything that you could do with those technologies in 2015. You're actually capable of achieving with the equipment on a mobile phone today much higher performance than what could be achieved at all in a national ID scheme with large sensors and a database matching. We are nowhere near it. We are way beyond those and we are selling it at a fraction of a cost. But what we are doing is we are delivering a million sensors a day, even Sundays. The main trends, well, they come from the mobile market really. Uh, the volume of the mobile market and its competitive nature and its fixation with user experience and a smooth, uh, friendly user interface have been driving this very much. So from having been a government-imposed uh, sort of technology, where you had no choice but to use what was being presented to you. And often you had to be directed by an officer in order to perform it correctly. Today, what we have is the most smooth, fluid experience that you can imagine, because that is what is being asked. Today, biometry is not the means of control. It's a means of, for private people to actually be able to authenticate in a very smooth and efficient manner. It is driven by user experience and that is a major change that has come through the, uh, the specifics of this huge mobile market that we found. The other thing which has helped in this development is work that is partly being done by global platform and partly was being done in industry before but is being now standardized by global platform but it is the development of means and methods of assuring uh, trust in devices in tokens that are not under your control so in the past banks would issue their private banking card and they would trust them because they had issued them government would issue national ID cards or passport. They trusted them because they issued them. But now we're in a situation where both the bank and the merchant trust your mobile phone, which they have no insight into. Because with methods like Global Platform, we've been able to secure the communication and messaging and relationship between these devices in such a way that we actually have trust in a device that you do not control 
but which can still vouch for my identity and my capability for, for example, performing a payment or submitting my tax returns. And this has come to the point where, for instance, uh, the Swedish government is accepting bank ID as a signature method for our tax returns. Looking forward, we are already now moving beyond the logon on your personal device, uh, unlocking the car door and applications like that. What we are looking at now is the uh, major opportunity in volume appears to be payment. Payment transactions authenticated by biometrics will make those more fluid. You will lower the hurdle to perform the transaction. But further than that, what we do have are government benefits programs. Whether it's pension, uh, retirement, whether it's healthcare and other things, it's important to hook it up to the identity of the recipient. And that is being performed and will be performed much more frequently with biometry again. Again, it's convenient, it's easy, but it's also locked to the physical person, which is exactly the, the choice that you have there. Um, further, we have the electronic identity applications, which will further the use of your national ID or uh, privately issued identity documents. And then, of course, identity and access management, whether it's physical or logical access which is already in place for logical access, I would say. You often use your fingerprint over your phone to be able to access not only your bank, but also your Facebook or what have you. What you will see in the future is that those will hook into applications for physical access or logical access at your workplace and other things. So we think that biometrics and specifically fingerprint is set to actually replace uh, PIN, password, and a username. Our position is that, for the first, biometrics have to be fully integrated into the security uh, architecture of global platform, so that the results can be trusted, the data, the sensitive biometric data that I as an end user put in there, I can trust will be protected against tampering or stealing. The other thing is that obviously cost, size, packaging, power consumption, speed and performance have to be adapted for the biometry for each type of use case. Today, we are at the point of actually achieving those adaptations for integration into a smart card at the very highest levels of uh, demand for assurance and security. I think that once that has been done, folding out from there, it will be possible to reuse the packaging and the solutions that we find into other somewhat less demanding use cases. So uh, those are the two main issues and then finally, which is an entirely internal biometric case, is that the enrollment. The enrollment is the moment when you lock the identity as you understand it to the biometry which is locked to the physical body and that locking has to be done in a way that is satisfactory not only for the end user, it's important, but also for all the relying parties. And relying parties will have very different demands on that process. So I think we will see a number of different enrollment processes, either physical in front of an officer for a national ID, anything to a FIDO type, I enroll myself on a device I own and no one is the wiser for it. 
So we are going to see many different ways of resolving that. And uh, once every application use case finds their happiness in that, we are, go Sorry, we are going to find that uh, they will deploy biometric solutions as a means of enhancing user friendliness, speed of transaction and user satisfaction, I would say. Global Platform is the industry organization that provides interoperable, standardized communication under security and trust between all the different parties in this system. Without that, there is no means of actually deploying a generalized solution anywhere. What I think is that Global Platform is going to provide the sort of uh, web on which this will be possible to deploy and use in a practical fashion. And we're already seeing that the technologies promoted by Global Platform are creating trust in the different devices that are being used in this. I believe that I, as an end user, will own a limited number of tokens or objects which are associated through biometry with my personal identity. Those objects will communicate in different situations and through different channels the necessary non-biometric data to authenticate my identity to anything from my government when I do my tax return, to the police when I've been speeding, to my garage door when it opens, or my bank when I want to make a withdrawal, anything like that. I'm going to use a limited number of devices. I don't think people will have any large number. I think it will be something like three or four. They will be linked to me by biometry, there will be fingerprint, there will certainly be iris, there will certainly be face, and there might be other things. Those will be sometimes small devices, like a little token with a, a radio transmitter. It will be typically devices that have a large part of our lives, like my mobile phone, unfortunately, my wife would say, and it will be other devices that we don't think of as identifying ourselves today, like the car, for instance, but maybe it will be a device I use to personalize the car when I pick it up, because five years from now, maybe I won't even need to own a car.